In videos number 26 and 27 in our analytical mechanics series, we've been discussing the conical pendulum, and specifically we've been considering the angular momentum of the system. The angular momentum, of course, has to be taken with respect to certain points. Before we get into all that, reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, here is our conical pendulum, a very simple setup, a rope with a mass attached to it, and it's being swung so that the mass goes about a circle. And what we found back in video number 26, if we consider the angular momentum of the system with respect to point C, its value is RMV. That's the tangential velocity. That's the radius of the circle. And that is constant throughout. We also discover that its magnitude is constant. It's always pointing in the upward positive Z axis direction. So when the angular momentum is taken with respect to point C, it's conserved. Its derivative is zero. And indeed, we did show in that in that video number 26, we calculated the torque with respect to C, and in fact, it did come out to be zero, as we would expect it to. Then in video number 27, we calculated the torque with respect to point Q. Not here, but up here. And we found that it has a constant value. It's LMV but the direction always changes. So the time derivative of the angular momentum with respect to Q, that is not zero. It has a constant magnitude, but the direction changes. That means that the torque with respect to Q should not be zero, and indeed it isn't. We calculated in the previous video, it's this non-zero value, RMG. Now in this video, we want to consider what is the direction of the torque as we go about the circle? So let's see how that works out. Here, let's consider this situation. Here's L. Here's the particle. And mg just goes straight down. This is Q. So we take the cross product of L cross MG. What's the direction of that? So L is like this. MG goes straight down. But of course, we have to put the vectors head to head. So it's like this. And now L cross MG, that's going to be pointing right out of the board. Remember now in the last video when the particle or the mass was at this position, the velocity also was coming right out of the board. So the torque and the velocity, or we could say the torque with respect to Q, is in the same direction as the tangential velocity, or the same direction as the linear momentum. But what we showed in the last video, video number 26, is that this tangential velocity vector is perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. Well, the torque with respect to Q at this point is right in the same direction as that tangential velocity vector. So the torque with respect to point Q is perpendicular with the angular momentum taken with respect to point Q. So the torque and the angular momentum are perpendicular to each other. Now if we consider it over here, the particle goes 180 degrees. At this point then, the tangential velocity vector is going right into the board. 
and again being perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. Now let's consider the torque when the particle is over here. So now it's going to look like this. Point Q is up here. Here's the length. Here's the mass going straight down is mg. Now to get the direction of the torque L cross mg. So L is like this. mg goes straight down. Put them head to head. Now we want to go ahead and take this cross product, just get the direction of it. So we're taking L, and then we have our fingers, we want to wrap L, so it's going to be in juxtaposition with MG. So when we do that, our thumb is going to be pointing right into the board. As we wrap our fingers here on L, to put this in juxtaposition with MG, our thumb is going to be pointing right into the board. So that means that the angular momentum, or not the angular momentum, but the torque Q is going to be pointing right into the board. And that's the same thing, or the same direction, that the tangential velocity was in, as we discussed in the last video. It's pointing right into the board. So the torque with respect to Q is always in the same direction as the tangential velocity, and the tangential velocity is always perpendicular to the angular momentum. That's what we discussed in video number uh, 27, I think that was. So that means then, since the torque is always pointing in the same direction as the tangential velocity, the torque is always perpendicular to the angular momentum. So what we have is this, just showing two positions now. Here, the particle is here, and the torque is coming right out of the board, perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. Here, the torque is going right into the board, perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. So, gamma Q and L Q, they're perpendicular. This, if we think about it, this explains why the angular momentum with respect to Q, remember we said that always has a constant magnitude. It was LMV. But we said its direction was always changing. Now we can see why. To understand that, Let's consider this. We say that the angular momentum with respect to Q has a constant magnitude. So we take its dot product, that would be its magnitude squared, but that's just going to be some constant. Now, let's take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to T. Let's take the derivative here take the derivative of that constant, that's zero. So d dt of this dot product is zero. We can break this up into two parts though using our differentiation rules. It will be this derivative times this plus this derivative times this equals zero. But of course this and this, they're the same. So we have 2 times LQ dot the derivative of LQ with respect to T equals 0, or so we can cancel the 2 out. So you have LQ dot its derivative, but of course the derivative of LQ 
that is the torque. So we have LQ dot the torque is zero. Well, that happens then when they're perpendicular to each other. We know this is non-zero, that's RMG. So the only way that that dot product can be zero is if these two are perpendicular. So if we start with this, going back to here, saying that this is always constant, but this is not zero, what that is telling us ultimately then is that these two had to be perpendicular to each other, which is what we found. So what we can think of then is that throughout the circle, the torque is always perpendicular to the angular momentum. Since it's always perpendicular to the angular momentum vector, the only way that it can change the angular momentum vector is to change its direction because its magnitude is always constant, meaning that they had to be perpendicular. And indeed, we just demonstrated that they are perpendicular. So therefore, the only way that the torque can change the angular momentum, it doesn't change its magnitude. The only way the torque can change the angular momentum is to change its direction, which indeed is exactly what happens. That's just what we demonstrated in the previous video. OK, I think that's all we wanted to say at this point for the conical momentum. But the concept here that the torque is causing changes on the angular momentum here, because it's always perpendicular to the angular momentum, the only change it can cause is the change in the direction, not a, not a change in the magnitude. But this concept here where the torque sort of drags the angular momentum vector along with it, that's sort of the key concept that we'll use to explain the phenomenon of uh, precession and how gyros work.